Today, I would like to talk about all of you. Every single one of you. Shocker, huh? <laughs> it is a TED Talk, after all. But I would like to talk to you about your lives, and more importantly, how you perceive them. Each one of you perceives your life in a certain scale of color. And the theme for tonight's event is Under the Rose, which in Latin, as I'm sure you're well aware, is sub rosa or in secret. I think everyone's lives here appear colorful on the surface, and yet, if you look under the rose, people's lives are often gray and gloomy. Their lives have lost color. By show of hands, how many people here have heard the phrase feeling blue before? A decent amount of you. Wow. That's unusual because often when I talk to people and I ask them how they're feeling, people rarely say that. People don't really say that they feel blue anymore. People usually say that they feel gray or that they feel nothing. I've been going to college in Tokyo for about a year now and in talking to students, I have found that a lot of students say that they do not feel anything. They go through their lives and their routines and they don't feel a single emotion. They don't feel happiness, sadness, anger. They feel nothing. Their lives have lost color. I think a lot of people, and a lot of people have told me this both growing up and even now, that your life loses color as you grow older, as if it's some unavoidable process associated with aging. But I don't think that that's true. I think that what happens is people's lives get more complicated, people get in their routines because that's the easiest thing to do, and people let themselves succumb to a lack of color. People let themselves lose the color in their lives. Let me give you an example of the opposite. My mom is well over 50. She is also an occupational therapist a child worker, a professional diver, a dance teacher, and created dozens of masks to help people during the pandemic. Additionally, she is an aspiring writer and artist and an interior decorator, or someone who creates interior decorations both for her own house and for others to sell. If you had to guess, when did she do any of this? Now, most people would say, a decade, two decades, three decades, maybe even her entire life, but no. She either learned or mastered everything I just listed in the past five years. Most people's next question would be, why? Why would someone do that to themselves? As an occupational therapist, that was her nine to five job, and on top of that, she was a single mother. So she had to deal with me on top of that. So why would she take all of her free time, the little amount of it she has, and dedicate it to so many things. It's to make sure her life never lost any color. If you're constantly trying new things, you will never feel like you're stagnating. You will never feel like you're not going anywhere and your life will feel purposeful. I have three phrases that encapsulate what I'm trying to convey and encapsulate the way I think is best to avoid losing color in your life or to add color if you feel it is already lost. In classic TED Talk fashion, fashion, these all start with the letter V. The first one is view your life as a narrative. There's a common myth parroted among social media circles as of late called main character syndrome. And it's the idea that you are the main character of life. You are the only person who matters. Everyone else is a robot, NPC, hallucination, whatever you can make up to prove that they are not real. They do not have thoughts. You are the only person that matters. Now, I don't think that this idea is true or has any validity whatsoever, but I think the reason why people are so attached to this idea is because it gives them purpose artificially, because it, makes, it tricks their brain into thinking that they are the only person that matters. I think this idea should be emulated in spirit but without any of the narcissism attached to it. Let me explain. The way I accomplish this is by listening to music. This is a audio player. I listen to music every day when I leave my apartment, and every day when I leave my apartment, I choose to listen to a different song. Whatever song I'm listening to will dictate the pace at which I walk, so I'll walk and beat to the song that I listen to. And as I listen to it, 
I will weave through crowds of people walking to the station in beat, almost like it's a dance. And this makes every day I go through feel a little bit different than the last. It prevents it from feeling, like, colorless. For example, if I'm listening to a faster song, I'll have a little bit more urgency, so maybe I'll cross the street a little bit, more, little bit earlier than I would have normally. Or if I'm listening to a slower song, maybe I won't jaywalk, and instead I'll cross the street on the crosswalk like everybody else. Regardless, my life now has variety. It has purpose, and it feels more colorful. The second V is value the little things. I have very defined ideas on life, and that's something you'll learn as you, if you ever talk to me for long periods of time. And one of those defined ideas is that everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. There is no such thing as coincidence. Everything happens exactly as it needs to to create the narrative that we call life. Now there are, of course, philosophical and theological reasons why I believe that, but those aren't nearly as important to me as the third reason, which is it gives me something to think about. Imagine if every single minute event you see throughout the day means something. It has a direct effect on you. That is how I think of life. Let me give an example. Say you're, you are walking to the station, bopping along to your music, as we mentioned a minute ago, if you took advice from the previous V. And as you're bopping along to your music, you trip and you fall on a rock. And now you have a bruise on your face and a scar will likely form in your forehead. And maybe your day is ruined. <laughs> You lost all the momentum you got from the advice you took previously because your headphones fell out, maybe you even cracked your phone. Your day might be ruined. But if you're me, when that happens to me, what I try to think about is why did that happen? And I'm not talking why did I trip and fall because that could be any number of reasons. More specifically, in the grand calculus of things, of life itself, why did I fall? And as I pick myself up and I'm walking there, that's all I'm thinking about. And suddenly a car speeds in front of me, a meter from my face. And it clicks. If I hadn't tripped just now, that would have offset my timing. I would have been a little bit faster and perhaps me tripping just now saved me from getting hit by that car. And then I will continue to think about this throughout the day. And for a lot of people that might seem stressful, but for me, it makes everything around me seem much more colorful because everything around me seems to be purposeful. It all matters. Nothing just happens because that's what decided to happen that day. It all has an effect, a butterfly effect, on the next thing. The last and final V is the easiest, in my opinion. Visualize where you want to be. Every day when you wake up, I will encourage you all Figure out something new to do. It could be anything. Just pick something, whether it's st getting a new drink at Starbucks. Maybe you don't have time to learn a new skill, but if you have time, maybe you should. Why not? When I was starting this talk, talk in order to prove my point to myself, I decided to learn how to yo-yo. No reason, really, aside from having a friend who knows how to yo-yo and really wanting to feel more connected to him. And, you know, perhaps me being able to yo-yo will give me better dexterity. You know, every time I throw the yo-yo and catch it again, I'm getting increasingly better hand-eye coordination as I do it in various angles and such. So if it has a practical benefit, why not? The great thing about using these three Vs to your advantage and to change your life is it doesn't only help you. Of course, your life becomes more colorful and you're definitely adding color and making everything seem more saturated, have more depth than it might have appeared before. But the great thing about this is that a lot of people don't live their life this way. And as a result, whenever you live your life this way, people see that. Almost as if you're the only colorful thing in their own grayscale picture. You have a different energy. You, you jump off the page to them. And I think that's very important because not only are you helping yourself, you are helping others. So I encourage you all to walk away today and be the light that you need, and that someone else needs in your life, and be the life that you need in your own life. Give other people color, give yourself color, but give the world as a whole more color. Thank you.